Hello, this is Todd from the Erie Art Museum, and I'm here for another round of Meet the Artist. Today we have one more artist to talk to from the gallery the year that was missed. And with that in mind, um, if you haven't seen come into the art museum and seen the gallery the year that was missed, you have until April 3rd to do so. So please come stop in, maybe even get a membership while you're there. Anyways, to keep this moving, we're gonna get right into it. We have a metalsmith and recent graduate from Edinburgh University, Jen Lau with us. Why don't you say hello, Jen? Hi. Hi, welcome to uh, Meet the Artist. How are you today? I'm I'm doing well. Um, do in quarantine right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, uh, you know you have to do what you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, why don't you you know give us a little primer? Tell tell us a little about yourself. Okay. So um, my name is Jennifer Lau. Um, usually go by Jen. Um, uh, I currently uh, substitute teach um, pretty much full time um, and am a recent graduate um, class of 2020 um, from Edinburgh University where I received my master's in studio art. My concentration was in sculpture with actually only a minor in metalsmithing, um, but that is the medium that I fell in love with. <laughs> How did your journey take you to smithing? Okay, well, um, I, so I started out in sculpture um, because I knew that sculpture was incredibly open in terms of, you know, what you could do. Um, you, you know, you, you can, you can paint in sculpture, you can perform, you can work with fabrics, you can, you can do all sorts of stuff. And so that's what drew me into sculpture. Um, and that I also, I also enjoy working uh, more physically in 3D. Um, anyways, um, and then what happened was I started building, you know, very large. And of course, because I don't have a BFA um, and Edinburgh happens to be a very technical school, um, you know, all, all the grads who came in had a BFA and I didn't. So I was like kind of doing post back level stuff, learning at the same time. And I, um, you know, the faculty was like, oh my God, so, uh, you need to take steel fabrication because that's going to help you with whatever you want to do, build armatures. And I thought, I don't want to take steel fabrication. So it was kind of a thing where I was like, I don't want to do this, but I should. Once I started right. it, I loved it. It was like, whoa, this is so cool. And then fell in love with that and started making stuff that, you know, for the body, but it was out of steel. So it was very bulky and you know um then they were like okay so take metals right. <laughs> I was like okay then I did and I was like I love this so much and so that is how I fell in love with uh metal smithing let's uh kind of turn our attention to I guess the uh the reason that you're here and let's talk about uh the gal the exhibition I guess that you have uh, up within our gallery the year that was missed. I believe the name of it was Femetallic. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah. why don't you tell us uh, about what you have on display with us? Okay, so my work on display, um, I called it Femetallic and the Electrical Conduit, um, is basically um, about uplifting other people um, onto a platform that they've never had before. And so um, how it actually started was I had back, let's say my second to last semester in um, graduate school had, you know, I was um, just kind of experimenting around and I had actually created a, a body, like a harness for myself out of nickel. And it it turned out pretty nice and um I remember putting it on and uh someone else in the studio uh who I work with a lot um they said to me they're like wow they're like how much for one and I was like hold on <laughs> I like the fact that they you know 
I, I saw their eyes light up and them imagining themselves in something like what I was wearing and um, just getting so excited about it. And I thought, mm, I'm not gonna be the only one wearing this. And so I then got to thinking about diversity which I'm incredibly passionate about. I got to thinking, like going to the roots of my feminism and um, thinking about, you know, what has affected me growing up as a female, what, what still affects me as a female. And then what, you know, who else, who else do these, you know, uh, these things affect? It's not just people like me. It's, it's, it's people of all different genders. It's people of all different races. It's people of all different ages and sizes. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> We've all struggled with, with something here. And perhaps it's time that we, you know, form a team, a diverse team and, you know, do something really fabulous together. And so, what were some of the challenges that you faced in coordinating something like that? And if you were to do it over again, would you make something that like opulent? I said. Mm. I love create, I love looking at something that I've, you know, like, you know, done or a team of people and I've done and it is so extra and so opulent so I don't think I'd ever stop working that way um, that's great oh, it's the most challenging um aside from okay so basically the when I had started this project um which involved so many different people and it involved hiring yeah. um recruiting a photographer um from yeah. the university um her name's Sarah Artis um she's incredibly talented um and I got her name through some one of my friends who was like we've got a great photographer for you she's she's so like-minded like you and she would be so on board with this she's really comfortable to work with progressive um and so i thought i want to bring her on my team and um you know so she could also showcase her work um coordinating people's schedules was definitely mm -hmm. difficult because this was a huge huge project and you know you had to plan everything like down to the it you know <laughs> Yeah. but day by day and then and coordinate you know 12 different people's schedules at the same time um and then also just an exhausting amount of work in terms of preparing the materials interviewing people um because i was very careful to not um go after you know certain people and and say oh hey you know you're this or you're that would you be willing to model for me i don't i don't like that um so i put out an open call on facebook saying i'm open to anybody who wants to feel like you know fabulous and and be like spotlighted and you know i'm uh, all genders all races body types welcome just message me so that's how i did it um and then interviewing them um to gain insight to who they were um and get to know them um and also then fittings and you know everything like that and in building those harnesses to them in the middle of all that the studios had shut down because of coronavirus right and so this this show was put on pause um for a few months until we started back up again uh the erie art museum was so kind to give me a studio space to continue working um and and doing photo shoots and so uh, we didn't start again until November. And <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, exhausting. <laughs> um, but I, I would never, I don't think I would want to work in any other way. I, I, there's something about working with people that's just, yeah. um, that's the, that's so motivating for me. So would you say that the intent behind the harnesses was offensive or defensive? Are they were they made to break down stereotypes and patriarchal thinking, or were they made with the intent of self care and acceptance or self love, or is it a mixture of both? I would definitely say it was a mixture of both, um, and 
because that's exactly what I had in mind when I initially built mine. Um, so, you know, without getting too explicit here, I think people often look at the harness as something um, that, you know, a, a person wears because they uh, completely decide to submit, but that's not true. And so um, there are many, many cases where a harness is, is it represents, um, a dominance, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, and and what everybody, you know, during the interview when they, because they knew about what I was going to be doing for them, what I was going to be building them, it, you know, because there's complete like consent going on here. It's like, this is what I'm doing. This is what, you know, um, you know, this is what you can do or, you yeah. know, completely laying it on. So they knew they're like, you know, everybody's response is I want to feel beautiful. I want to feel powerful. I want to feel sexy. I want to feel, you know, like I'm owning it. And, um, the fact that everybody said that, because that wasn't something that I, those weren't words that I put in their mouth that those weren't words that like I had ever, you know, they didn't talk with each other. They didn't know each other. It's just a common thing that they all said. And I was like, that's interesting. So it was definitely a play on both for sure. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to start, um, thinking about wrapping things up. Why don't you uh, tell us what you got planned uh, for the future, what you're doing now? Kinda, okay, so yeah. um, I um, currently, you know, like I said in the beginning of the interview, um, am substitute teaching. And so I'm, I'm doing, uh, you know, K through 12. Um, and, you know, because of the nature of my work, I keep my name very separate from Femitalic um on social media on everything and that's also because i don't want to censor my work um but i do need to keep it you know um and so what i'm finding um through through substitute teaching is that i actually you know i always had in mind is like i want to be a college professor i want to i want to teach i want to you know help people that way and promote education through something i love so uh, the arts um but now I'm finding that I, I really love all age groups um, and do really well at it. And um, so I am looking at a bunch of things right now um, in terms of career, um, but I really do think that teaching, somehow teaching and balancing my art practice. All right, so you've studied art for, uh, I believe shorter period of time than most of the other people I've interviewed. Uh, how long have you studied art? Two years? Three? Two years in a, a program where I'm only focused on art. Right. Um, my minor was in studio art when I did biology. And so, um, yeah, fact, yeah. I would, so I would say, oh, um, years? Hmm? you've studied art for six years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you should, um, you know, I feel like at least have a, uh, a grasp on an answer to this question. Okay. <laughs> so, wow. In your opinion, what is art? I would say anything that comes from something very raw in the mind that somebody decides to put out there. And what's really important about that is that you're, you know, when, I, when I'm talking about something raw, a raw thought, that is that that is like my definition of like imagination. It doesn't come from something you've learned somewhere. It doesn't come from something that you've seen or read or you know rules that you've learned. You you know you're you're talking about something completely pure, like manic almost. And what you put out there and how you put it out there and how you choose to present it, that can definitely be affected by like inspiration and stuff like that. But, but the root of it, uh, the root of art, I think, comes from this raw imaginative thought that you decide I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. make this viewable or see, seen or heard somehow. All right. Wow. That's a, that's a powerful answer. I really like that. All right. So, you know, we got to wrap it up and uh, why don't you uh, get, tell us where we can find you? You can find me at Femitalic. So I'm Femitalic on Instagram, on Twitter, Facebook, um, and uh, my website, 
femmetallic.com. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's all we have. This was Jen Lau. Uh, I'm Todd Paropasic from the Erie Art Museum. This was another round of Meet the Artist. Thank you guys for watching.